Hi, good morning, everybody. This is Steve Monday, Chief Forecaster with Rowan County Weather. We've got a special episode of the Rowan County Weather Podcast today. As you know, we've uh, done this podcast for a while now. We've talked with local athletes. We've talked with NASCAR drivers, Charlotte FC players, and different things like that. And from time to time, we like to get some community involvement as well. And there is a big event coming up with the Rowan Chamber of Commerce that I really wanted to highlight today and talk with some folks that are involved in it. And that event is the Minority Business Trade Show coming up Thursday, April 25th at Livingston College at the Hospitality Center. And if you're wondering where that address is, it's 530 Jake Alexander Boulevard in Salisbury. All kinds of great things going on there. There's some great folks involved, some great companies. You see them all listed on the screen. Some wonderful sponsors helping make sure this happens as well. F&M Bank, the Salisbury Post, Livingston College, uh, a lot of other great sponsors involved. And again, just really wanted to take the time to get some information out to you all and get, get the folks that are really involved in it to talk about the event and uh, help you understand more about it. We're going to turn it over right now to Elaine Spalding. Elaine's with the Rowan County Chamber. Uh, Elaine, good morning and welcome with us today. Good morning, Steve, and thank you so much for inviting us to be on your podcast. We are happy to share information about our upcoming Minority Business Trade Show, but just first, uh, tell a little bit more about the Rowan Chamber that uh, maybe some folks aren't aware. Of course, a Chamber of Commerce is a business advocacy organization. We're supported by over 800 member firms that belong to the Chamber of Commerce. We don't receive any government funding. Everything we do is to serve the local business community, and we serve businesses all over Rowan County. So uh, a number of programs within the chamber are set up to serve different targeted groups of business people within the chamber. We have a women in business group. We've got a young professionals group. We've got an agribusiness committee. But this group, the Minority Business Council, is chaired by Elia Jagoric with Jagoric and Associates. And I'll let her explain a little bit about the overall Minority Business Council. Elia? Thank you, Elaine and Steve. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak to um, this uh, podcast. But anyway, our Minority uh, Business Council started a few years back. And what we have um, noticed that it works best is that we do Zoom meetings. And the Zoom meetings um, are held every third Tuesday at nine o'clock in the morning. So everybody, as a minority business, we find a lot of times that it is very hard to get out of your uh, your businesses. And so that's what we decided again, COVID help us out to make that decision. Um, but again, it's very successful that they can just log in and we have presentations. We have presentations from accounting, insurance, uh, grants. I mean, everything that can involve uh, as a, a minority business. And we bring the speakers from different areas and that's how we can help each business uh, grow. Um, but again, um, under the Minority Council, uh, business council we also have another uh group that is the business owners uh, the hispanic business owners so we're continuously growing um within the chamber uh but again this is our second annual uh business straight and we are just so excited because last year was very successful and this year again we have a a great chairperson that is gonna hit us in that direction too but again thank you for the opportunity Thank you, Elia, that's great. And uh, I'll now introduce Ralph Young, who is the chair of our Minority Business Trade Show. And he really stepped up last year, was our first year for this event. And it grew out of the Minority Biz Council that Elia was just talking about. But this whole event is just a wonderful opportunity for people in the community to see all of these fantastic minority owned businesses we have in the community. So I'll turn it over to Ralph for an update on our upcoming trade show. Thank you, Elaine. So uh, Steve, good morning again. We're very excited to uh, showcase our local owned minority businesses. Um, this year, our goal is to encourage major employers to uh, increase their percentage of uh, business that they do with uh, diverse groups, if, if you may. Um, at this particular point, what we want to do is make sure that um, 
we present the opportunities for exhibitors to come and join this fabulous um, opportunity to showcase their industry. Uh, we want to make sure that those that um, actually may not have the opportunity to, to do paper manual, you can go to the Chamber's website. And on the Chamber's website, there's a registration form um, electronically. You don't have to um, go to the Chamber. You can just go online and the Chamber has made this so easy for everyone to participate. So again, we're very excited and we hope that um, our local entrepreneurs um, definitely take advantage of this opportunity to showcase their industry. Thank you. And thank you. I certainly appreciate it. Uh, so for folks who didn't get to last year's event, tell us a little bit about what you might see if you come to this year's event uh, with the different things that are going on around the hospitality center. Well, there's a, a, a rave of um, activities. Um, first, you, you'll have the chamber ribbon cutting. Um, um, there would be a mix and mingle with advertising, drinks, and door prizes. But as it relates to the um, folks that are going to be there, the exhibitors, you'll see an array of different um, industries. It, it can be from food to um, actually environmental, um, indoor air quality, HVAC. I mean, just a variety of, of different um, industries that will represent, of course, uh, the Salisbury Rowan area. Um, Elaine could give you a little bit more additional information as what's going to take place as well. Yes, yes, we have a very exciting announcement at the start of the Minority Business Trade Show. Ralph mentioned we're going to do a big ribbon cutting to open the exhibit hall doors, but the city of Salisbury it will be launching a new small business grant program in conjunction with the chamber, and uh, we're really excited about that. So uh, if uh, folks want to join us on that Thursday, April 25th, right at 4 p.m., that's when the grant announcement will be made, and we're really excited about that as well. But just to tell you some of the success from last year's uh, Minority Biz Trade Show, Steve, I mean, we had, um, as Ralph was talking about, you know, all kinds of different businesses. I mean, there are minority owned businesses in every economic sector in our community. And I think some people may not be aware of all of these wonderful products and services that minority businesses are offering in our community. And Last year, after the trade show, we had a number of the major employers contact us, like Ralph talked about, and ask for a list of those minority-owned businesses. Uh, some of the major employers uh, wanted to do like a special celebration for Juneteenth, and they wanted specifically to use a Black-owned business bakery or restaurant to help them with that celebration. So that's something that we can provide to the community if they're looking for a list of those minority-owned businesses. And then uh, one of the things that really made us feel very proud from last year's Minority Biz Trade Show is that there were several pop-up shops uh, that came to, uh, to the trade show, and they were still just sort of in the very infancy stages of their business and operating things out of their garage or their basement. And several of those businesses have now opened storefronts, brick and mortar stores, and are really doing well. So that always makes us feel so proud that they saw this opportunity as a way to get their name out and about, and now they have grown that business. So lots of those will be back for uh, continued, you know, opportunities in the community. And so if there are new businesses like that that are just still sort of at that, you know, entry-level phase. We love entrepreneurs. So please come and join us for this Minority Biz Trade Show. Yeah, Ralph? One other thing, Steve, also, and I, I forgot to mention this, <laughs> However, last year we had a prompt to about 500 attendees um, for the trade show, and not to mention the amount of vendor booths um, were in an area of about um, 47, 48, somewhere in that neighborhood. I'm not sure, but very close to that number. So 
um, as the chairman this year, it is my uh, aspiration to exceed that number. So hopefully we would, um, again, on this call, uh, capture those that, as Elaine said, are um, in the incubation stage and would love the idea to get some exposure. And not only that, but also the Minority Council will be facilitating some of the opportunities to show people how to properly set their business up, how to market, um, uh, procurement, all those good things. So we're very excited this year to go into another year of constant growth and one of the number one um, business advancing opportunity counties, which is Rowan County. So I'm excited to be a part of that. Fastest growing is what I was trying to get out. <laughs> there you go. We, we, we definitely are. And, you know, uh, we're, we're certainly proud of the big businesses we have. Don't get us wrong. We've got Food right. Line. We've got Cheerwine. We've got Chewy. Right. We've got some great businesses here. Macy's is Absolutely. opening up a fulfillment center, obviously. But, you know, the shop local really is a big thing. I mean, it has just as much of an impact as any big business does when we all can collectively work together. Um, Elliot, so with the minority businesses, obviously everybody's important, but tell us just how important those minority businesses are too in the grand scheme of things. How important it is, um, we, we just need to give the opportunity to everybody that like, like Elaine say, you know, that they're beginning, but they don't know how. It's like they're just a little afraid. But I think through the chamber and the minority group, we kind of help each other by kind of guiding to who do we uh, touch bases? How do we begin? What, who can give us uh, grants? How, you know, just that that helping hand as of, okay, tell me where do I go and that's the best thing that in the chamber you kind of connect with other new businesses you connect with bigger businesses so in in the event that the minority business is here is that we want to help each other grow and be able to stay open because a lot of times if we're not preparing enough um those small business fall. And so with us, we can help each other. We can guide each other. We can tell them where to go. And so this is so important for us to have this trade show because this is where we can all see each other. And networking is obviously very important. I mean, like you just mentioned, it's, it's something where others have been through. Uh, you know, it's kind of funny. Business is like life in a way. If you've ever encountered something or in your, your first time doing it, Others have probably already encountered that as well. And it's great to have the folks to be able to connect with and learn from. And Elaine, the Rowan Chamber uh, does a fantastic job of that, uh, you know, to be able to, to get folks connected with the right people. And I know that uh, throughout the year, you know, there's different uh, opportunities with the chamber. And one of the big things is I know at the near the end of the year, you folks really reach out and try to get businesses involved. Um, and my question would be is, can, can a business even, you know, regardless from... Uh, the smallest business up to the biggest business in the county, can they join at any time or is there just certain points of the year where they can join? Excellent question, Steve. Uh, memberships in the Rowan Chamber are open to any businesses that want to do business in our community. We actually have members that are based in Charlotte or Raleigh, but they want to do business in the Rowan region. And so they're welcome to join at any point during the year. We do have a concentrated campaign in the fall of the year. And uh, our volunteers like Ellie and Ralph, you know, introduce people to the chamber and encourage them to get involved as well. But uh, you can join at any point during the year. And I think this Minority Biz Trade Show is a good opportunity. It's open whether you're a member of the chamber or not. But I think, you know, people will see the benefit of getting a little more involved in the chamber after they attend something like this. And like Elia said, that peer to peer support is the most important thing. Um, and uh, for other minority owned businesses to maybe meet some people that maybe they're looking for a graphic designer, or maybe they're looking for somebody to help, you know, with um, some that we have several minority uh, attorneys in town. And so we want people to support each other. And that's what it's all about. 
And let sure. me give, may I, I just want to give you an example. Um, Seda, which is from downtown, send the message about a new business coming up. Uh, I hope you don't mind, Elaine. But anyway, this is a perfect example. Um, she sent the message to Elaine because it's a new business coming to town. And this young man, um, his mother has another business. I had spoken with them some years ago, but it's kind of like they're not ready. They're not ready. But now Seda spoke with him. He's opening another business and he's ready to join the chamber. So Elaine uh, sent me a message and she said, why don't you touch bases with them? Again, it's like comfort that they trust you. And here I am I'm making an appointment with them. They're opening a little bit today, I believe. Uh, and then their grand opening will be next Friday. But again, is that welcoming that through the chamber, you welcome another small business into the area and say, here we are, how can we help you? And so again, he probably will join as soon as we contact him and tell him what the advantages are about being part of the chamber. That's awesome. And uh, so Ralph, you know, um, on that note, you know, as you mentioned earlier, there could be some folks that are watching this right now who are maybe very early on in their business. Maybe they've just gotten the idea over the last few days or even weeks, or maybe they've been like living with this idea for a while of starting their own business and they're, you know, they're thinking, well, I'm, I'm in the minority here. I'm not going to be able to really get this off the ground, but for this particular trade show you've got coming up, there's ways for those folks to come in the door and really find out, Hey, it's very possible. And what would you say to anybody who's watching right now who may be thinking that? Well, for those that may consider themselves, um, um, looked at as the underutilized, um, you have a wealth of people there with a wealth of knowledge and we'll be able to encourage them and to guide them to resources that will enable them to not only set their business up, but set it up the right way. As we know that there's several different entities, um, people get a little nervous when it comes to liability to make sure that that your business is set up properly, having a proper coverage for it. And the number one thing is understanding, of course, um, accounting and having someone to assist with that. You may not be able to, to afford, you know, a CPA, but there, there are resources within the chamber that can help with that. So those resources that one may need, they are, are available in abundance with the Chamber of Commerce as well in a minority council, which works together. So it's the same thing. Yeah. Did yeah, you have thoughts? Sorry, Elaine, you know, did you have yeah, yeah, I was just going to say, you know, we are very, very proud of how our community came through the pandemic together. And uh, there were a number of businesses that, you know, really reached out during that time frame and needed help with all of the different small business grants and loan programs. And, and the chamber continues to do that. But the one thing that we saw that some of the businesses just weren't prepared and we have been encouraging through the Minority Business Council and really want to lift it up with this trade show on April 25th is, you know, it's really helpful for your small business to have a local bank, a local CPA, a bookkeeper, uh, you know, a local attorney. Hopefully you won't need to go to them too often, but, Perfect. you know, to have those professional connections in the community help get you through the rough times. Yeah, definitely. And it's it's kind of interesting. I think back to, you know, we just celebrated 10 years here with Rowan County weather. And I remember. Congratulations. I, thank you. Thank you very much for coming up on year 11 and certainly, certainly loving every minute of it. But, uh, you know, I think back to when I started this and, you know, got, you know, reached out to the secretary of state to become an LLC and all that. It's interesting, the influx of emails you get from people from <laughs> everywhere that you don't know them from Adam's house cat. And that was the, one of the things I struggled when I first started was I had attorneys reaching out to me from San Francisco or wherever. And I'm like, I don't want to, you know, not that I don't want to talk to them, but I would rather have someone that, you know, if, if the question arose, I knew, okay, if I can't get them on the phone or get them in an email, I can at least drive, you know, 15, 20 minutes to get to them versus, you know, trying to get somebody across the country. So when you mentioned that, that immediately popped into my mind was thinking back to when I first got started even doing this. Right. Um, and, you know, one of the struggles that I see, uh, and, and it's kind of funny how it can relate really for any business, 
is when you first get started is is the growth uh, and being able to get people to know about you. And one of the best ways is word of mouth, obviously. And when you get that word of mouth going, uh, you know, it can really take off like a tidal wave in a lot of cases, depending on the scenario. And, you know, I just think about, the you know, an event like the trade show coming up where that's a great opportunity if you're really starting to try to get the word out there about yourself and you're and you can't really afford to get the advertising going and, and things like that. This is a great opportunity to jump in there and get going, not only with that, but also to really get connected with the chamber and get connected with folks who can help you get off on the right foot and, and stay going. And Elaine, with that, uh, you know, uh, I know we've got some, obviously, some new businesses coming, uh, and there's some great things that are happening. You you folks mentioned a moment ago, and if you don't mind, I just would like to share that about an event you were at in, in uh, Granite Quarry yesterday, uh, you right. and, and, and Ella, and, or Ella, I'm sorry, I keep messing your name up, I apologize. Elia, you, Elia. Yeah, Elia, thank you. If you wouldn't <laughs> mind speaking to that just for a moment, I think it would be a great example of what folks can find out, you know, in getting involved with the chamber and, and with trade shows like this. Yeah, the ribbon cutting service is one of the benefits of being a member of the chamber, and we were honored to be invited to celebrate with a brand new business in Granite Quarry. It's called Students in Training. Ellie, you want to talk about what they offer? Uh, yes, uh, actually, uh, Robert, uh, I can I can't think of his name. My mind just went blank. But anyway, he actually is the one that started the business, and he is. Um, he fixes computer. He helps you with your um, programs and, you know, he helps you in any type of uh, computer issues. Um, I started seeing his business right here down on 52 and he started by just opening his business. And before you know it, he developed it into that student training, students in training. And this is a nonprofit organization, but he has already um, set up a program for the week as of what they what he teaches us. And this is for after school. So, you know, kids sometimes they just don't know what to do in the afternoon. So he decided, let me help them out, learn uh, the skills of um, computers. And these kids are so smart. I saw a presentation yesterday. It's like they knew to tell you exactly about the computers. And it's like, oh, my goodness, I really do need to take a class here. And um, but again, they just don't offer it for adults yet. Uh, but I'm pretty sure he eventually will do it. But again, it's just that uh, communication with those young kids, because that's the new thing. You know, we need to learn about computers. We need to learn about how to set up uh, programs, how to set up all kind of um, technology. But he has this space for them where he has desk computers. And like Elaine was talking, you know, if we have an old computer that we don't we don't use it anymore. It's good to uh, bring it to them. They take those computers apart and they can tell you what this little gadget is all about memory, whatever, clean. I mean, it was amazing in his life. But again, they have um, bins of different um, inventory and they can put it together. They can put it apart. But I think his program is going to be, ex you know, excited. Very, very good. So again, folks, if you were listening and you heard that, if you've got an old computer that you just laying around collecting dust, there's a way for it to get some new life and actually help someone along the way. All you have to do is donate it. They'll clean it out, scrub it, get all your personal information out of it and get it going. Uh, you know, I want to talk more about the trade show as well. So you've got all kinds of great sponsors on board. You know, your, your main ones, obviously, f and Bank, the Salisbury Post, um, uh, you know, uh, Livingston College being able to host this. Uh, tell us how important it is to get folks like that and, and all the other sponsors that are listed on there as well. But how important is it to get that community backing, Ralph, to be able to make a show like this uh, continue to grow and be better and better each year? It's it's very important. It's very important to have the community um, investors um, to partake in this. Basically, what it does as well um, that we have to keep in mind. And before I forget this, um, the actual booth, the exhibitor booths are 150 for chamber members and 300 for non-chamber members. I forgot to mention that, but um, so that will need to be completed by 
Friday, April to the 12th uh, to be able to participate in the trade show. So I don't forget that. <laughs> I want to put that there. But um, going back to your initial question, it is it, very important um, that our community investors, that's what, I'm, that's what I call them because they are, are the ones who invest in the community and um, help bridge the gap with those that may not have the resources to have this type of exposure that's being provided. So um, again, we're very thankful for those sponsors, the um, our silver, our bronze, and our gold sponsors for this year. And hopefully uh, moving forward, we, we will be able to pick up more and do more because without them, um, of course, we, we were not able to facilitate this trade show and, and provide the opportunities for those that need to showcase their businesses. So, and again, thank you, Steve, for giving us an opportunity to, to share this information. Absolutely. And, you know, let me have something I, else. Absolutely. Go ahead. Um, I like to kind of mention that if there's any business out there that would like to donate uh, a gift certificate, uh, because we will be given gifts as um, you know as the time goes. Uh, but if they want it, that will be also a good opportunity to voice who they are. Again, we're trying to meet both, you know, both businesses in the community. Uh, but again, that will be um, something if they want to participate. Sure, that's great, great information as well. Absolutely. How important is it that you have, a, you know, a, a great college like Livingston, Livingston here in the county to really be able to host this event? I mean, you could obviously host an event like this anywhere in the county, but to tie it with Livingston makes it even even more special. How important is that for you? Well, all of our higher education facilities are wonderful, but Livingstone College stepped up right away when we started talking about doing this minority business trade show, and they have that beautiful Livingstone Hospitality Center with a gorgeous banquet room and plenty of room now that Ralph is, has these big ideas for expanding the Minority Biz Trade Show. We had the banquet room completely full. So this year we're branching out into the atrium area and all the way down the into the lobby area with uh, exhibitor booths. So uh, we, ha we have plenty of room to spread out there and lots of space to have the refreshments for people to come and network and enjoy and just have a really good time. Great. And I want to apologize to you all. I've been I'm, I'm fighting some allergies and things like that today. It's obviously tis the season for for pollen and stuff. And for anybody who's been watching, I've been taking a couple of sips here and there of a drink to keep my throat uh, from getting dry and, and coughing. And there are a lot of folks that watch this that are very uh, eagle eyed on what they're seeing. So, yes, it is a Coke Zero if you're seeing it. Uh, normally for, for the locals, I would have cheer wine, but I ran out actually yesterday and haven't gotten to the store to get it. But cheer wine, if you are listening, I'll be more than happy to drink some of your products <laughs> while hosting these. <laughs> um, but you know, uh, also Ralph, you mentioned earlier, it's, it's 150 for a booth. If you're a chamber member, 300, if you're a non-chamber member and the is deadline that? is April 12th. Yes, sir. Um, correct. Is, is there, so let's say someone was looking to join uh, the, the chamber between now and April 12th and they went, you know, hey, this is a great idea. I want to, I want to double up and do both. Is, could they join and get the booth at 150 or is there like a deadline before they can do that as well as a solid deadline just April 12th? I, yeah. I will let Lane answer that question. We've yeah, actually yeah. had quite a few people do that already. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, as Ralph said, the deadline, because we, we have to plan the whole layout. So sure. we need to know how many people are in yeah. by Friday, April the 12th. Uh, yeah. But uh, uh, packaging that with the chamber membership, you get the discount on the exhibitor booth. So that would be great. And then, uh, and if you just want to come and get um, the uh the exhibitor booth this year and sort of see if that works for you. Yep. That's fine too. So 
you know, whichever way works best for you. We are all about that. We do, particularly, Elia mentioned the uh, gift certificates or gift yeah. baskets. If somebody wants to do those for the door prize drawings, if um, if you're a restaurant or a food truck or a caterer and want to provide just a couple of platters of some complimentary um, hors d'oeuvres, that would be very welcome as well. So we're uh, we have this great uh, committee that's working on the Minority Biz Trade Show, and as we get closer to that April 12th deadline, we'll kind of figure out where everybody's going to uh, be placed, and then uh, we'll be there working hard uh, the day before the Minority Biz Trade Show and there to open the doors and celebrate with all of you on Thursday, April 25th, 4 p.m. at Livingstone Hospitality Center. That is awesome. And, and then, you know, for I, I'm a big coffee person. So, you know, just, just a shout out to the Mean Mugs and the Cocoa Javas and the Willowbrook Grounds and the Holy Grinds and all the other coffee coffee shops around the county, you know, if you want to drop off some coffee by there, they'll take it as well. <laughs> That's, That's great. great. Uh, mean Mug uh, Coffee Company was actually our very first minority oh, biz awesome. of the year recognized yeah. at the Chamber's annual meeting this year. So I'm sure Evelyn would be all about that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I love Mean Mug. They've got a great story, obviously. And, and mm -hmm. you know, uh, really any of our small businesses do around the around the yes. county. But uh, certainly yes. buy local, buy local. Yeah. Don't go to that big other coffee yeah. shop place that they have everywhere <laughs> in the U.S. That's right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Buy local. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, coffee is great out of Seattle and America might run on one group, but Rowan County runs off the local stuff. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Yeah. Well, before we wrap up, Elaine, so I did want to get to just kind of go back around to the group real quickly and and, and really get your, uh, you know, for, for anything that we haven't touched or anything that you might want to get the message out to folks who are still, like I said, because, you know, we live in a world where folks will sit down and watch an episode like this or, or see things that come into their inbox and all that, and they will really wait until the last minute to make a decision. So any message you want to get out to the folks that may help them kind of get to that decision today in terms of getting out to the trade show and getting involved? Absolutely. Yes. One thing in particular, um, it is a business to business expo with valuable business connections made amongst, of course, the participants that would be there. Um, so, again, look at it as a resource base um, for those that are interested in actually um, starting up a business as those that may be attendees. So you have people that you could speak with to get firsthand information on um, setting up business as, as well as just networking, which is very important. So I, I would, um, you know, uh, use that as an opportunity to um, collect as many business cards and um, find as many industries that you can possibly make a connection with to do business with. Yeah. And I would just add uh, Ralph's comment about uh, people being exhibitors in the minority biz trade show um, that we would encourage everyone in the community, particularly if you have responsibilities for purchasing goods and services for your business, both public and private sector employers, government, education leaders, please come to the Minority Business Trade Show and see all of these wonderful businesses in our community. Uh, we encourage you to buy local and really support particularly the minority-owned businesses. Ellie, any closing comments from you about the trade show? I'm just going to ditto, ditto. Buy local, buy local, <laughs> support each other. <laughs> There you go. Well, one more time, just to put it out there. So the Rowan County Chamber of Commerce Minority Business Trade Show, it's Thursday, April 25th, 4 to 7 p.m. at Livingston College. Uh, the Hospitality Center located there at 530 Jake Alexander Boulevard in Salisbury. All kinds of great things going on with the sponsor exhibits and the ribbon cutting ceremony. As they mentioned earlier, there's a big announcement coming at that ribbon cutting ceremony just after. So make sure you're there early for it. You can mix and mingle, do all kinds of networking with great folks and get uh, answers to questions you may have uh, if you're just getting started or maybe you've been around for a while and you're just encountering something for the first time. 
you know, there's likely someone that's been through it. So certainly an opportunity to try to get answers to those questions there as well. You see the great sponsors up on the screen here who are helping to make this happen. And uh, it's just going to be a great event. So make sure to get by there again on Thursday, April 25th from 4 to 7 p.m. Uh, for this wonderful event. And folks, I really appreciate your time this morning with us. Uh, certainly looking forward to seeing how the event unfolds and and uh, definitely looking forward not only to how this one uh, you goes, but uh, the ones coming for years to come as well. All right. Well, that's another edition of the Rowan County Weather Podcast. We certainly appreciate everyone watching and have a great day. And we'll be back next week with another episode.